Uh, Fairfax County is a fairly large system. We're the uh, tenth largest in the United States, 180 plus thousand students. Uh, we have no majority population, um, and so it's a, quite a mixture of uh, kids from really 200 different countries of the world. Uh, we have about 120 different native languages. We are a high-performing district, and many times we are at the ceiling of some of the normal assessments we do, such as our state testing. And so to have really some goals that are stretch goals for us is very important to our continuous improvement. So it's not only that we are trying to expose students to rigorous academics or college level academics, but we also are looking to develop students who are problem solvers, who are curious, intellectually curious, who are uh, inquirers, who are researchers, who are globally minded, and who are ethically responsible and feel like they have a responsibility back to the community and to innovate. I cannot express how excited I was with the rich detail in the report. Just absolutely surprising in how much information there is there. I, probably the greatest surprise to me was the questioning to the students on how their relationships are with the teachers. That's incredibly powerful and, and something that I plan on using. Well, at first, everybody wants to see what was my score in reading, what was my score in mathematics, what was my score in science. But as I've worked through it with my own Department of Accountability and Professional Learning, that has kind of dimmed compared to the great resources that are in it, talking about the achievement gap, also the different levels of each of the subjects. That is very, very rich. It's a much richer um, data set versus the school testing where we get a simple numerical score, uh, pass or fail on a number base, where the piece for schools test is much more detailed um, and we can go deeper into that information in terms of comparison with ourselves, comparison with um, other countries, um, teacher attitudes, which is something that's very interesting that we really don't get to see very much of at all um, with the tests that we currently give. One of the things that is challenging in a large system like we are is getting consistency across 25 high schools. I think in terms of surprises that there were some places where students were performing above what we would have expected and it gives us a chance to look at like schools and see why is this happening here and not here. So we began a conversation with our principals about can you help us think through why at one high school you're going to have outstanding performance in mathematics in a comparably socioeconomic school not so good in mathematics or in science or, or in English. And the, as the principals began to discuss that, just within, and seeing variation even within their own schools between math and science or math and reading and that sort of thing. So when schools have similar attributes, similar aspects, and wondering, oh, we've always done it this way, and we do it this way because that's our cultural acceptance in our district, to look for other places that might have different results, better results, stronger results. Students are showing um, further bounds than we might, and to look at those and say, how can we integrate those practices into what we do? Because clearly there's something working. We start at the school level and say, if this grade level team is doing this, could this other grade level? And then you go to other schools and you benchmark against other schools and say, well, how they're doing. And then you get across our district, and then that allows us to get national and international benchmarking so that you can do that. You can say, here's a conversation that I can have with a like school that's getting better results here. Or they can say, here's a conversation I'd like to have with you because we see how you're doing in this area. So I think it really does um, make that vertical articulation of benchmarking go from school to district to national to international possible. What interested me was the 60% of students who are restricted as far as their reading goes. And that's something that we have begun to discuss quite a bit at our school. How do we develop a lifelong love of reading, which in turn will inform success in all sorts of subjects? Even students who are already proficient at problem solving and, and communicating uh, can grow and can learn to do this at a deeper level, um, to do it with higher level content, and we want to make sure that we continue to um, extend the knowledge and skills for students who are already proficient at things. 
we had been talking about critical reading for a number of years and it had been a goal. Part of that goal uh, came out of some discussions that we had anecdotally from teachers when we decided for our school improvement plan that reading was important. Our kids weren't reading deeply and we knew that. They weren't reading thoroughly, they weren't reading enough. Um, so the results really indicated that our kids are reading average nationally and it threw us off a little bit because our science scores were uh, comparatively higher nationally as well as our math scores. Fairfax County Public Schools offers a great curriculum throughout our, our schooling for students and so it's interesting to look at where do girls and boys differ in their learning because the boys are outscoring girls in science. And so I want to really kind of look at that and say, how can we support girls, especially probably in physical sciences, chemistry and physics, so that they have opportunities if they want to pursue those opportunities. The one thing that concerns us is when we saw the distribution of proficiency, despite the fact that the overall results were good, we still have, I think it was 22% of our students who are below what's called baseline level. So there is a group of students in our school who are part, at least in part of the sample, who are not yet at the point where their proficiency levels uh, where it needs to be, for sure. And um, so we have a lot of work to do, you know, bringing them up to where they need to be. This test had nothing to do with the specific content or specific skill. It had everything to do with a student's ability to sit down and reason their way through problems. And for what's coming in, in the future, for that matter, it's already here today. That's really what the United States is going to need in, in the workforce. The other thing I'd like to say is that for me, in terms of hiring and sitting down and choosing staff, I want to hire teachers that get this, that understand that some of the, um, the significance to the, the higher level thinking and the um, application questions that are involved in some of these piece of sample questions is important. It is the future of education. And I want it to actually make their minds kind of click too. And I sort of feel like they can lead the kids in this learning by sort of being PISA-based people themselves. Now some of the other areas that um, we found much more interesting and in fact we spent a lot of time uh, pulling the onion apart, if you will, and trying to really analyze were the relationships that kids had with their teachers in math, in science, and in their English classes. And how, in our case, we were a little surprised to see that at best was average, and in some cases well below average. And so we're asking the question, when, we've, when we focused on our curriculum and, and its relevance and its rigor, we haven't necessarily focused on the relationship side with our kids. And so that's an aha for us that says, as a system, now I'm looking at the broad <laughs> Fairfax County, as a system, we probably need to focus on how it is we develop uh, positive relationships with our kids throughout the county and not just average. For me, I think the biggest eye-opener was the student survey data because it really, um, across the board, from motivation, classroom discipline, uh, and relationship with teachers uh, gave me a sense of where these kids are thinking. And that's something, although we have a lot of interaction with individual students anecdotally, we don't do a systematic collection of, of where they're at, what's bothering them, what do they like, um, what would make them more successful. One of the um, things that PISA for Schools helps reinforce is uh, for us in Fairfax at least, is we've been promoting professional learning communities for the last decade. Since we've been doing this for a decade, we have moved m many years ago away from the I gotcha mentality to how can we learn. And that's one of the most powerful transitions that is the result of a high accountability system. The first phase of it is always in every country of the world it seems to be, oh my God, who is that and I got you and how are you, so, why are you so at such a low performing school? When you can get past that to then identifying some of your outlier positive performers and then learn the policies, whether they be a school level policy or procedure or practice or a district level policy, procedure or practice that has influenced that experience for kids in the classroom, that's when you get into very, very rich discussions about schooling and learning and not about test scores.